What are you doing? Millie Rock. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> This is what quarantine does, Paul. I guess so. Yes, I guess so. Indeed. Welcome, everybody, to Hashtag Sports. Uh... That's all he's got. He's been gone for two weeks. That's all he's got. <laughs> two weeks? I, we recorded last week. We were in the car last week. I can't remember. It seems like it was a month ago. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hashtag Sports. I am Paul. That is Mario. Which, why are you laughing? <laughs> because you always make fun of my it. openings. You haven't done this in a while. I know. You can tell, right? In case you missed it over on Sportscaster on Saturday morning, we cut an episode uh, talking about what if the Buffalo Bills 2020 season uh, were just not to happen. Or, you know, talking about an abbreviated season, what that would do to the draft, free agency. So a lot of cool stuff there but today we want to talk about the bills because the nfl has announced that they are not pushing back the draft let's talk about the buffalo bills drafting a running back uh with their second uh with the second round pick that they uh, that they have a running back yeah running back paul yeah let's do it you know I, there's always that one running back every year that i'm just like oh this is the guy right <laughs> i got one of those this is the guy behind the guy yeah. behind the guy yeah this is the guy uh, the guy. I know your infinite love as well as hashtag nation knows about your infinite love for running backs and certain running backs uh, to be, uh, to be specific, but it's interesting too, because the bills did not have a first round pick. I don't, wouldn't foresee them taking a running back in the first round anyway, but at 54, it does seem rather interesting. It's kind of mm-hmm. interesting though, but you said because they got Devin Singletary in the third round last year and you seem like, mm-hmm. it seems like a lot of that running back help is going to be pushed down anyway, that they wouldn't have to, um, move a lot but we know about being like he loves being a mover and a shaker so uh, i'm interested to hear your theory about because i I, i've pulled up round two let's just let me just do this right now real quick uh so we have round two the first picks uh, all the way up to uh, all the way up to buffalo so you got uh, cincinnati indy detroit giants chargers carolina miami houston let's i mean we're going through the list but let's talk about teams that probably don't need running backs first Sure. So you want to yeah, do yeah. that? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. So, um, so if you take a look at the order of the second round, uh, we'll just look at the top 10 picks inside the second round, right? So yep. we know Bean has a love for trying to move to get the right guys. Um, mm-hmm. Now, being at 54 is kind of a little deep, yep. um, you know, to crawl out of that hole. But, um, you know, it's before the compensatory picks come in um, you know, because the pick, compensatory picks start at the end of the third round. So there's still a lot of value there. There's some, you know, future picks you can trade. Um, But looking top to bottom, you got uh, Cincy, Indy, Detroit, the Giants, Chargers, Carolina, Miami, uh, Houston, Cleveland, Jacksonville, and and Chicago kind of rounds out top 11 there. So if we take a look, we'll just look at the top three uh, in order. Cincinnati, Joe Mixon's going into a contract year, so I guess they could be in on a running back. You but I'd kind of be hard for yeah. to believe that they're going to go Burrow or insert name of quarterback plus running back. That just seems like a lot um, on the offensive side of the football. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, right? bringing them all in um, one year would be very, Yeah, I don't know. That'd be a lot. I don't know about that. That'd be a lot. Yeah, that'd be a lot. Uh, Indy is set at running back uh, between you know their tandem of backs, so they're fine. Uh, Detroit is in need of a running back big time. They were just kind of piecemealing that running back position. Uh, they've got the third overall pick in the first round. I do not foresee taking a running back at third overall. No. Um, so that's that's kind of like the the sweet spot for them in the second round um, because there's going to be some good backs available at 35. Um, the Giants are at 36. You're not usurping Saquon Barkley, so you don't have to worry about the Giants. Why not? The Chargers, on the other hand, what? Why not? Are you, are you feeling okay? Do you have a fever? Do you have a dry cough? I haven't talked in like five minutes, so I was getting worried. <laughs> uh, no, but it, right. it's just okay. So the Chargers, you don't know. It's a very, it's a big uncertainty going on with um, with Melvin Gordon. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carolina, the, you know, being just loves right. jumping Carolina, um, but they're <laughs> that's right. The running back situation is very set. Uh, Miami seems to be very set. Um, even mm-hmm. if they were trying to trying to take a running back, that's a team that you would want to skip anyway. So, I, right. you know, it's it's interesting. You have Indianapolis twice. 
would they be an ideal landing spot for the Bills if they wanted to trade up? I'm very curious. Yeah, because about that. Indy's not falling back too far, right? Because Indianapolis has the 44th pick and the 34th pick, mm-hmm. so Indy dropping out to pick up more picks isn't isn't a bad place for them to be. Mm-mm. Now, mind you, Indy's also holding in the first round uh, no picks. Do they have Do they have a single pick in the first round? I don't think they do. Uh, let me check. They don't. They do not have a first round pick. They do not. They have two seconds, a third, a fourth, a fifth, right. and two sixth. Right. So thirty four is their first pick in the draft, right? So um they're more likely to hold on to that one than they are forty four. The Bills gotcha. might be able to swap out fifty four for forty four. You know, Indy might see some value dropping back ten spots, but Go asking them to give up 34, might, that might be a tough sell. Well, I think the greatest thing you, you see uh, when you look at that drop down to 54 mm-hmm. uh, for the Buffalo Bills. So you got Indy, then you got Tampa, Denver, Atlanta, Jets, Pittsburgh, Chicago, Dallas, Rams, Philly. No mm-hmm. divisional rivals for um, for Indianapolis. So it doesn't right. seem like they, unless it's a specific player that they think a team in there mm-hmm. will take from them, it, they're, they're not worried about dropping behind a division rival, which is one of the things right. you have to worry about in the draft. Mm-hmm. So, right. um, so let, let's just, let's just cut to the chase here, Paul. What, where do you think is the ideal landing spot where the Buffalo Bills and Brandon Bean would try to trade up for your running back? Right. So two, <laughs> two, two places, one Detroit. Uh, but again, Detroit's likely to try and draft a running back in the second or third round anyway. So I'm not really thinking Detroit is going to want to move out of that pick at 35. So 34 is a target. Uh, if you're Buffalo, you want to jump Detroit. Uh, but Indy is going to be hard pressed to sell that. That's their first pick in this year's draft. Yeah. Um, so while you might call Indy, I wouldn't expect anything to happen. Now, if your running back gets through 35 with Detroit, you're calling the Giants. Gettleman was there previously, worked with Bean in Carolina. You're calling the Giants because you've got to get ahead of the Chargers. Uh, the Chargers have the sixth overall pick. Again, uh, it'd be hard-pressed to see them take a running back at six. Um, they don't have another pick in the first round, so um, it, that's the pick that you need to get. Is If you're going to trade up to get a back, you got to get ahead of Detroit. you got to get ahead of the Chargers. At uh, you got to get If you can get ahead of Detroit, get ahead of Detroit. But the Giants at 36 is where you want to be. Uh, okay, so you're, you're going up to 36 from 54. Yep. If we were to take a look at right. the, you know, the, the customary chart, Mm-hmm. So the uh, so you're going to 36, which is the, is the draft value chart. If you guys don't know, it's on overthecap.com. It's one of the things that was made famous by Jimmy Johnson back in the day, the coach, mm-hmm. not the race car driver. But uh, so 36 has a value of 540 points, and 54 has a value of 360 points. Mm-hmm. Um, so to try to get up, the Bills also hold the uh, the 86 pick. I believe mm-hmm. so right, three, yep. 360 and 160 gets you to 540 or 520 mm-hmm. um, roughly around what you would need. Right. Mm-hmm. You checking my math. Right. Yeah. You're checking my math. Yep. You're right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> he put a calculator next to him just to make sure, uh, which I don't think, <laughs> I mean, second and a third for a second moving up that many spots. I, I don't know if it's, Third is still a high pick. I mean, third third rounders before the compensatory yeah. picks come in is still a huge pick, uh, albeit down near the bottom of the third round. It's still not that bad. Do you think the Bills would have to give up another pick? Let's just talk about that. Do you think they have to give up another pick? Yeah, uh, yeah, they would have to, right? Okay. So this, this moving up that many spots, um, it, that's a big jump, right? You're looking at giving up a, a pick this year and then another next year oh. um, to try and balance. So. I mean, you could start looking in that and, you know, a a third this year and a fifth the following season. uh, That's always a possibility. But, um, you know, the Bills do have a need. And and again, I know a lot of people might be saying, guys, what the hell are you talking about? The Bills drafting running back in the second (laughs) round. Let's let's talk about that just for a second. Right. So I know everybody loves the promise of Devin Singletary. Right. Bill's got a great value for him in the third round. But this wouldn't be the Bills if they weren't looking at trying to shore up their positions across the board. And this is a great season to try and give a little bit of uh, – breathe some more fresh air into that running back room. Now, Singletary was a great uh, a great pickup for the Bills late in the season, even in the middle of the season. Uh, we were all pining for him to get more touches. Yep. And let's yeah. be real, Singletary is a great interior runner, and he was used a lot in the receiving game, which was something we did not see from him in college. Right. Yeah. So yeah. wouldn't it behoove the Bills to, again, continue to try and build their offense as big as possible? You've already added Stefan Diggs. So why not go ahead and expand that running back room? Because after you've Devin Singletary, it's it's kind of a trailer park of whoever's left. 
Um, and I don't think the Bills want to lean on Josh Allen having to throw the ball 40 times a game to survive. I just don't believe that. If Devin Singletary goes down, it is a big, big, big problem for Buffalo. Yes. Um, yeah. It's a big problem. And you have the opportunity to address it. You don't have a ton of needs. You don't. Your defense no. is pretty much no. set for this upcoming season. You're adding some pieces along the offense. But if you're going to take a swing at trying to back up this position, this is the perfect time to do it. And and why not in the second round? I mean, it, it, it'll all depend on who's off the board. I mean, if we were to take a look at um, take a look at some running backs. Uh, so you're talking about just just so we just so we're clear, just so we kind of recap it a little bit. You're trading your second, your third, and probably next year's fifth. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. To, to move up to uh, try to jump. Uh, you want to try to jump the giant. Or you want to try to jump uh, the Chargers in Carolina. Right. Likely spot is Indianapolis at 34, but that's their first pick. They're going to hold on to that. You want to try to jump uh, mm-hmm. uh, LA. So you're going to try to go to the 36. So Brandon Bean is going to try to, you know, hit that relationship again. Uh, new coach there though. New coach for the Giants. Mm-hmm. So uh, right. Is there anything that you can give? the Giants in lieu of picks because we know how Brandon B loves his picks. Is there, is there anything yeah. that you can give, okay, a second and then maybe you can, you hold on to your third because I think that's a lot. I think give it, Brandon being given up two starters for one guy who's a compliment to Singletary, I think is a lot, even though you, you like, mm-hmm. you're right. They have shored up a lot of things. What, it, what is the, some alternates that you can, you can give up that maybe the Giants would want? Dude, I'm so glad you asked that question. And this one's going to make a lot of people angry, right? Um, oh but you start looking at some redundant positions. You just brought on Stefan Diggs. You don't want to lose John Brown. However, Cole Beasley, uh, while you add Diggs, and a lot of people are going to say, okay, well, this is really going to open up Beasley. The fact of the matter is Beasley kind of becomes a little expendable at this point. He and Brown's contracts are running at the exact same length for the exact same dollar. So you could you could kind of move clients. They have some really deep holes at the wide receiver position. Big holes at the wide receiver position. Um, you got Sterling Shepard there, and unfortunately, his health this last season, the last two seasons, has just been an issue. Evan Ingram put up a super disappointing season because they had no other threats. He was injured most of the season anyway. So I think you bypass giving up your third if you can if you can package up Cole Beasley. Uh, you still might have to throw in that fifth uh, next year, Wait. but uh, I think that's. Wait a second. What? Wait a second. What? Hold on a second. I, I just want to make sure that I heard you right. And I know yeah. I know you've been quarantined quite a bit. So I pulled up the, the Buffalo Bills depth chart currently. Yeah. All right, just so yeah, everyone yeah. can get a nice little v- a view of it. Uh, you know, they, they have guys listed in certain – and our lads. Our lads is a great site if you want to hit the – so you got Brown, Diggs, and Beasley. You don't have anybody backing up Beasley for the slot. So you, you're yeah. telling me that you're rolling yeah. into – the season with Isaiah McKenzie as your starting slot receiver. Why not? And Ray River cloud and uh, Duke Williams is back. Like you can, you can afford to take some chances here uh, because you're, you've got a, a returning receiver group. Yeah. I mean, if as I, if as I, if as Isaiah McKenzie cannot cut it in the slot after three seasons on the bills, it's time to walk away. Anyway, you would have signed him to more than a one year deal. Then initially when he started, why, sure. would, why wouldn't you have done that then? Sure, but if slot receivers are replaceable. Like slot, slot receivers are replaceable in the NFL. If you want a slot receiver, you can go get them in the NFL draft in the fifth and sixth and seventh rounds or undrafted free agency. Slot receivers are the inter- interchangeable piece. And those outside receivers are what are so coveted, man, and you know that. Oh, my God. So, wait. All right. Hey, time out. Time out. Let me see if I get this before you have to answer the entire comment section this week. I just <laughs> want to make sure. Uh, so, you're talking about packaging up your 54th pick. Yep. Cole Beasley and a 2021 yeah. fifth to move up yeah. to get a running back. Yeah. Sure am. Are you only saying this because Joe Judge was with the Patriots and he would covet Beasley? I, that actually didn't even cross my mind at all. But you're 100% right. Beasley would be dangerous. Oh, God, it offense. makes sense, too. It may, it would make sense for I Joe Judge to do that. I didn't even think about that. Oh, my. Didn't even think about it. Goodness, I, I can't stand you right now. So yeah, all right, so if we're looking at this, that. if we're looking at the depth of the wide receivers and the depth of the running backs here on this chart, you got obviously you got Devin Singletary. Your current backup right now, as listed by our lads, is TJ Yeldon. You, you just signed Taiwan Jones. You got Christian Wade. Mm-hmm. Um, 
for Perry and Gore. Uh, no, uh, very unknowns right now. Uh, Gore said that he still wants to play, but uh, mm -hmm. I, I, unlikely that unless an injury happens, some team will give him a right. shot. You got John Brown, Duke Williams, Robert Foster, Nick Easley, Stephon Diggs, Isaiah McKenzie, Andre Roberts, and Ray Ray McLeod back once again. Um, mm -hmm. I just think for the simple fact is that the Buffalo Bills ran a, a lot of 11 personnel, one running back, one tight end, and you had three wide receivers. The I the mm -hmm. the opportunities and the the things that you have that would open up your offense more for uh, learning and developing Josh Allen, it would it would would not be it would not be beneficial to him to get rid of Beasley for a complimentary back, even though he, he you know, uh, McDermott's a defensive head coach. They're, they're going to want to run the ball. They're going to want to have a two back system in there, but we didn't see Dable run that two back system last year. I mean, it wasn't, no. it, it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't jumping off the page at you. The most people were saying, mm -hmm. Hey, you need a third wide out in this offense more than a complimentary back sure. to Singletary. Do you need both? Well, yes. I think, I think, well, I'm Mario, and I think the reason that people were saying you need another wideout was because their other their, their other you know exterior threat wasn't there. I mean, you were you were hashing together what you could find for that second wide receiver position because everybody knew Beasley was the two on this team. But the yeah. problem was is really, really Beasley out of the slot should be three. That you need you need a threat on the opposite side of him, and you were not putting Brown and Beasley on the same side of the field. Right. Because yeah. defenses would know, yeah. OK, we're just we're just going to we're going to single cover. Uh, we're going to shape the safeties over to that side of the field. We're going to single cover whoever is the other wide receiver. We don't even care. You know, you need another you need another exterior threat on that, that wide receiver position because Beasley just wasn't as effective as he could have been because he was often paired up against, you know, wide receiver number two, who was just a carousel of players, uh, whoever they could find that was helpful. I, I'll, I'll, I'll concede this point, though. I will say that if you did not pick up Stefan Diggs, mm -hmm. then okay. If you wanted to move on from Beasley, but I just can't see trading him away to move up to get a running back. But now mm -hmm. the fact that Stefan Diggs is now on this team, it increases the value of Beasley. Right. So Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. Uh, now, if you wanna trade Beasley and your second, um I think for Indianapolis for Indy's pick, I would do it. Not for mm -hmm. if you have to go past Indy and, and risk <clears throat> risk the fact that you're gonna. I mean, I just pulled it up once again. If you're if you're going back, if you're going up to 34, I can see it. I guess I could see it because Detroit mm -hmm. is is dangerous there. They're, they're going to need a running back, and they may take a running back that you want mm -hmm. because you know they, you know, once again, I think they run a very similar system. But <sighs> trading Beasley, I don't. Oh my God, I am not. I do not envy you this week in the comment section, my friend. I will not envy you. Well, and and here's here's why I say all of this, right? You're sick. Um, That's so why. That's one of the reasons said. that I, I, I <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. Stuck here is because there's a player that I really, really, really like, um, and I look at how he would fit into this offense, and I just with Devin Singletary just seems too dynamic to turn down, right? 